continuing on with the uh, lathe project here. Uh, today I want to do a little work on the uh, work stop system that I'm putting on this thing. Um, it's based off of a uh, Ramo 14 inch lathe that I have at work, French company, made by OKK in Japan. Uh, for this machine I'll be using a four-way turret tool post. So I wanted to put, of course, your four-way index and stop for your carriage, but I also want to put that same type of stop on the cross slide, and for the fun of it, we're going to tie both of those together so that when you do index the uh, carriage stop, you'll also index the cross slide stop. Alright, so let me, uh, I guess, explain how this is going to work out a little bit. So, uh, as you can see here, I already got my carriage stop put together. Um, it's a couple stainless screws, you know, adjustable, and then you can see the shaft that kind of protrudes out the back of it. So that shaft will be tied through a chain and sprocket to a shaft that will come out behind the bed of the lathe. So you tie these things together here. And then, once we get to the back of the lathe, where you can see uh, what I like to call the back apron. This is basically a part that I made mounting to where the uh, taper attachment would go on this machine. And uh, off of this block, I'll be mounting my digital readout scale. Another one here, readout scale. I'll have that shaft for the stop coming down here below the readout scale. And then in order to tie that shaft to the carriage stop, well to the uh, cross stop, I'll probably use a uh, 45 degree miter gear set up and then chain drive that to that stop. My uh, goal for today really is to figure out this bracket here. Where we gotta put it, you know, uh, go over some of the uh, requirements we're gonna need, some of the things that we'll have to account for and uh, see if we can start making something today. First things first, let's uh, take a look at what we got going on over here um, and see what things, you know, what's important in this design here. The four-way stop that I'm going to be making is going to be similar to the one that I have over there. Uh, same spacing of the bolts, uh, diameters are going to be similar, thicknesses are going to be similar. Here's a little piece of plastic that I turn. This is kind of my dummy stop that just gives me a general idea geometrically what things are going to look like as I move things around and see what's going on here. Um, also, uh, what do we got here? I think it's, uh, let's see, three by one piece of steel, uh, cold rolled, probably 1018. Um, this is what we're going to use for that bracket. Uh, personally, I was taught, you know, to live off the land. And what that means is really, uh, make things uh, within the resources available to you. Um, don't be so hard-headed on the design that you don't that you can't change it based off of what you got, you know? So yeah, like I said, let's uh, take a look at some of the important stuff here. Um, so, my stop, where my screws are, I want my screw basically to line up with my T-slot here. Um, as far as what hits that actual stop. Uh, I got a couple ideas I want to do. Uh, the simplest would be just, you know, a T-slot nut in there with just a post that could be adjustable, moved anywhere, which would hit that screw. Um, a little bit more complicated and uh, probably be nice too. I got this uh, kind of shop made depth gauge thing that I got in an auction, found it in the bottom of a bucket or something. So, uh, probably take off the uh, brown and sharp uh, micrometer head, make a nice little micrometer stop. That would be pretty neat, you know? Um, so, being at the center of where that screw is going to hit that, um, let's say, let's call it a dog, uh, should be the center of this T-slot here. So, that is, should be about half inch. I think that's what I machined it to. Yep half inch. So, what we do is just start making a little sketch here of what we got. We got our cross slide. That's our half inch now. 
we're going to be tying that bracket into here. So what we really want to know is where the top surface of that block is. We want that bracket to be mounted just a little bit underneath that so we don't have to worry about the cross slide hitting it. Um, so that's about 1.5 plus. So I think I got about a 30 second in there. So I'm going to say we want to go 1 and 5 eighths. So let's make that. We overhang a little bit on that. So we're going to say 1.62. Point six two five there. Um, now, where this is in this direction is going to be important because we're going to have to clear our gib adjustment nuts or our gib locking nuts. Um, what I got on here right now is a little bit big. Uh, I just kind of threw them together real quick just to get something and get an idea on the style that I'm looking for. Uh, probably going to make these a lot, a little bit more pro low profile. Right now, about 0.4. I think I can get those down to maybe about a quarter inch altogether. So I'm going to say that we have to clear a quarter inch from this surface here. So I'll put a line there. We'll call that 250. Uh, what else do we need? Um, now, where we screw into this block, as you can see, I have counterboard hole here to mount the block to the carriage I also have a clearance hole here so I can get to the gib locking nut in here uh, what I'll probably end up doing is making a special nut that's pretty long so that I can kind of lock it from here and just use a really long dog point set screw to actually push on the gib um, so wherever I put my bolts mounting in that bracket, I kind of want to be in this area and this area here, really. Now we gotta, I gotta leave a little bit of material here because this is eventually gonna have to get cleaned up after I'm done marking all this stuff and you know, machining everything, I'll probably grind this, so. I'm gonna say, we'll keep that at .9. Should be our finish thing there. That gives us the location of the center of our stop how far away we need it, our height. So we're good in this direction and this direction. Um, yeah, it should be good for now for that. And then now looking at it from this way, it, fairly, fairly simple from this way. Um, basically, you know, flush. Now I'm gonna take this down to maybe like, if I'm saying 0.9, I'm gonna leave a little bit of border on each side. So let's call it 0.8 on the thickness. Now, in regards to the thickness of the flange of our actual stop, I want that to be flush with this plane right here. So, in order to do that, the actual surface, what I like to call the register surface, which is basically where the back of the flange hits the bracket, that surface is going to have to be sunken back from that plane, whatever the thickness of our flange is. It's going to be about 0.3. So we're starting at 0.8 minus 0.3. That leaves us with a half inch for bolts. Half inch for bolts. Um, it should be pretty all right. Uh, I'm, I would like to get 5 16ths in there, but Maybe we're looking at quarter 20s on the half inch. What's a quarter 20? It's got a 3 8 socket head. If I want to counterbore it in, I don't have to counterbore it, but it'll look nice. Um, we'll have to go and see once we start actually drawing this thing out what we're going to do there. But as far as that goes, I think we're in a pretty much got the information we need now that we can actually go and start drawing this thing out and seeing what we're going to do here. So let's go take a look. Lucky for me, to make this a little bit easier, is I got my, uh, my CAD drawn here. For the most part, in my uh, hobby stuff, I like to draft everything by hand. I think it's fun, and uh, I like uh, the notion of paying respect to how things were done in the past, especially at home where I have the time to really uh, take my time and appreciate things. But where, we're, uh, where I'm pretty much building a whole lathe, uh, 
CAD definitely helps, especially where you got a lot of assemblies going on, a lot of interactions between things, you know. CAD definitely makes sure that, you know, you keep everything in check and you're not crashing into anything and things are going to work out all right. Let's go off of what we just measured and just make a quick little sketch here of what we're going to do. So like I said before, center of that slot is going to be important. That's really where we're going to meet the uh, screw to that dog that we were talking about. Also before we said we got to clear about a quarter inch for our gib nuts. So we'll say a quarter inch and then I'm going to go maybe another six, maybe we'll do three eighths. Now nah, we'll do like five sixteenths. We'll call five sixteenths there. Of course we don't have to be perfect here. As far as our drafting goes, this is kind of just in the shop drafting, opposed to when I sit down at the table and really do some drafting. Now that 5 sixteenths, that's going to be the wall of our bracket, not where the actual screw is. The uh, diameter of our stop is going to be two and a quarter. I want the wall of the uh, bracket to extend beyond that, I'm gonna say I'd be comfortable. I'm gonna say around an eighth of an inch. If we go eighth inch all around, that'll probably be pretty decent. Before we do that, let's actually just check. Now that we decided, we're gonna go five sixteenths from here to give us enough clearance for our gib nuts. Um, now that five sixteenths, that's gonna be to the beginning of our um, stop bracket. From there, I want to give myself, I'm going to say about a hundred, a hundred thou wall between the end of the bracket and where the stop starts. So let's say, let's say we go about a hundred, right? And now I said two and a quarter is the diameter. So let's do that. Two and a quarter. And then another hundred. So that will be the limits on the bracket. Also, while we're here, two and a quarter, we'll divide that by half, inch and an eighth. That'll be about our center point right there. Now, I also want that hundred thou on the other side. So we'll go a radius, inch and an eighth. And we'll go another hundred on that. So that is our upper limit on this block. Okay, now, bolting this thing to the back apron, as I like to call it. We said we gotta clear this one right here. And we gotta clear this one right here. Let's actually just give a check here. About three eighths, about an inch and three eighths, give or take. Yep, those are good. So I guess let's see here. Throw that down. So there's our uh, there's our stop. Thickness wise, let's talk about thickness. Um, not particularly this view, but looking at it this way, I said this is going to be 0.1, uh, oh, one inch. Um, I'm going to bring it down, say it about 0.9, and then from that 0.9, I want to have the total thickness of my stop, 0.8. This thing's 0.8. Um, I want it to recess, recess the flange so that it's up against that, that plane that I mentioned before. Now if I do that 0.3, 0.8, 0.5, that only gives me a half inch. So, let me actually go grab a bolt. We're going to use 5 16 bolts. I'm going to say somewhere in that area. And somewhere in that area. And then we can end this thing right about there. Here for a bolt. And a piece there. It's 
far as thickness goes. Um, I'm gonna counterbore these bad boys. And we wanna make sure we got enough meat still in there to hold the thing up. It is a stop. We are gonna be hitting it with a screw driven, you know, good piece of weight. So it should be pretty strong. I think about a half inch in there would be good. It's the width on a 5 16 5 16 <laughs> So what's that, a half and five sixteenths, a half and a quarter, three quarters, maybe, uh, let's call it, let's call it seven eighths. Seven eighths. I'm gonna go up. Now for this one, let's just see here. If we go in that area, we said five sixteenths, let's say we're gonna need a half inch or, or so, just to make sure. that so if we're coming around here down here I like this little bit of, I like that bit of meat down there um, pretty much what I have to do is either drill holes and tap figure out I got it in my mind the actual indexing for this stop uh, figuring you know some kind of set screws spring-loaded um, detent ball that I'll dimple into, you know, the diameter here. That'll lock that thing in. Um, that's what I'm figuring right now. We'll see what happens, really. Um, I'm not worried about it too much. I think I can figure it out. But I need a little bit of room to get that in there. So if we got our bolts here. Now, for this to go this way, we're going to have to have this sharp corner here. And that ain't going to work. So, what can we do? We're at 7 eighths. 7 eighths ain't too bad for a half inch end mill. So, let's say we do like a half inch. Now, looking at this thing now, I think I'm going to want to actually go and draw this for real. Alright guys, like I said while well, I was in the garage, now we're in the uh, my dining room drafting table here um, we're gonna do this for real just to get a good idea I do a little bit of fancy stuff going here with radiuses from the end mills and you know where these bolts are gonna be so I think it'd be better for myself just to get a graphic representation of what we're gonna be doing here uh, I got my drafting board set up got my vellum taped down ready to go everything's squared ready good um, now all I need here is this front view here and then our side view coming from here. Don't need a top view, not going to do anything for us. The size is pretty good, we don't got to scale nothing, so I think we'll start this one right about here and then we'll do that view over there. So I'm going to say right here is going to be the center of our stop. Right? Looking at our information here, uh, stop outside of the stop is two and a quarter. So two and a quarter divided by two, inch and an eighth, inch and one eighth. All right. So that's the outside of our flange. Inside, so the working diameter of the uh, stop inch and three quarters so inch and three quarters divided by two is fifty and three eighths is seven eighths we'll go seven eighths right. seven eighths so that is what we're going to be boring this block out to Pretty much what I will do then is get this hole in here. I think I'm going to do it in the lathe in the four jaw chuck this time. Pretty much keep drilling out until I get close and then start running my boring bar through it. And inch 750 is what I'm trying to hit. You know, really doesn't matter. As uh, one of my mentors used to tell me, don't mean shit. Uh, you find out 
the more you do all this type of stuff is a lot of dimensions and you know geometry really doesn't matter you know especially when you're designing assemblies where you're really controlling you know in this case we're controlling the diameter going in and what it's going into so basically whatever I bore this out to is what I'll turn that stop down to to get a proper fit hitting the numbers is nice but if it ain't important you know 745 755 760 whatever it is that's what will make it work that's basic these are the basic diameters of our stop uh, let's go ahead and put our screws in there we're running 5 8 center and what's that 5 8 and 5 8 inch and a quarter in between something like that pretty good gives us enough clearance for the nuts you know so we can tighten everything up and we're not really interfering too much with each other and not so far out that we're meant too big not too close you know so 5 8 right here pointer you know, lead five eighths same thing five eighths also should do that Alright, there's our centers for our bolts. Now, we said in the garage, we want to do about an eighth of wall on our bracket here. About the end. So, looking at this now, if we had two and a quarter divided by two, inch and an eighth, plus an eighth, should be inch and a quarter. There. And for now, we'll just give us any kind of line here same thing inch instead of that inch and a quarter switch it a little over for the lead there's a stop now uh, we can do our block now so now we originally said we're gonna do from here to here we want to do five sixteenths to make sure that we clear a quarter inch on the uh, gib locking nuts. I'm gonna say now the end of my cross slide is a little bit more this way than the end of here, the um, the back apron. So I'm gonna say from the back apron surface to this surface, we're gonna say three eighths. I guess we can go ahead and uh, put these radiuses in. So I'm just going to bring my compass out to the edge. And give it a little bit of that. We'll go down this way too. We're not going to cut this like that, but that'll give us a good marking. At least when I lay this out, you know, blew it up, lay it out. I'll draw that thing. That'll give me a good guide. Here's the flange on our stop. Here's that little bit of meat that we got extra that goes past it. What does that give us? That gives us about a half inch, uh, about three eighths, at least from this location around to here. Is that enough? Uh, let's see. So as this comes forward, we're going to be hitting here, wanting to twist like that. From our mountain area, uh, I think we'll be all right. Um, if we were hitting from right up here, I mean, again, same thing. Uh, I think we're pretty good. I think we're pretty good. Now, this type of stuff, you know, I kind of just... This kind of goes on in my mind. It's just a, you know, it's really... It's a physics equation. It's, it's, uh, it's mechanics, you know. You're talking about, you know, a force hitting here as far as your moment to here from this mountain surface. Your moment, you know, to here where your bolt's going to be, you know. Uh... Shear loading, this loading, that loading, you know, so I kind of just do that in my head, you know, after I've been doing this for a little while, so 
Uh, you know, I ain't busting out the calculus equations, but I think I think we'll be all right. You know, it should be okay. And you know what? If it bends, it breaks, it ain't the end of the world. We just do it again. You know, we do it better. Now, let's get some bolts in here. Um, to do that, though, we're going to want to put in, you know, where these are. So, we got to go three-eighths from that. And then we got to go an inch and three-eighths from that. And then, from the three-eighths, from there, like that. All right, let's put some circles in here now. Uh, five sixteenths stop bolts is what we're using. So let's throw these in there. talking three-eighths I think I use a three-eighths socket head cap screw holding on that back apron so let's look at that on our uh, Alvin screw selector uh, personally I absolutely love these type of things these little slide card you know engineering and mechanical charts here where you got all your information for stuff um, I collect these types of things I get them from I got all types of hydraulic ones and pneumatic ones electrical ones you know all at work uh one of my friends who retired who actually the uh, gentleman who left me this compass you know my pointer and uh this drafting pencil uh he left me a whole boatload of these things they're great i'm gonna show them off one of these days once i get around to it but um yeah very handy um for designing three eighths nine sixteenths so Let's give a 9 sixteenths in there. I would assume that I did a counter bore of probably a 5 eighths because I don't think I had a 9 sixteenths end mill, so. So I'm gonna put the 5 eighths in there. And then, um, let's see, here's a little discrepancy. See this hole right here? This is the clearance hole to get to that gib locking screw. As you can see in my drawing here, we're off. Uh, why I never went and fixed that, beyond me. Uh, call it laziness, call it uh, whatever you want. But I didn't. So what I'm gonna end up doing to fix that now is once I get this part back on the mill, uh, let's see how it'll work out. If I go with a 5 8 Five eighths. Five eighths might do it, but I'm thinking we're gonna have to go to like a three quarter, which is gonna look a little, a little ridiculous. But um, what can you do? Uh, maybe, maybe we go with the five eighths and just kind of slot it like so. That might be what we do. Yeah, take your time, pay attention, because uh, you end up saving yourself from having to do uh, a little bit of repair work here. So now we got to hit that other one. We said we're going to do a 5-8 um, slot in that piece, so. Um, originally in that drawing looks to be about a half inch, so an eighth of an inch from the center. Go down like a sixteenth or something like that. So, eighth of an inch, and then we said we're gonna go down like sixteenth or so. So, somewhere in that area. Okay, now, do our five eighths, five sixteenths bolt. Chart here. Five sixteenths socket head cap screw, fifteen thirty seconds. What's that? 
a little under half inch. So we'll say half inch. Uh, got your scale here. Scales are half inch. So if we go somewhere like that, right in the middle there, that's going to be too short. Before we said we want about, what do we want? For our detent indexing mechanism. Half inch, nah, yeah, half inch, so if we go, let's say one and a half, that should give us enough of that. And then uh, I think we said in the garage we wanted to do seven eighths. Seven eighths, enough for the counter bore and everything. Yeah, with seven eighths. Okay. So, seven eighths, and again, like we said, we want to do three quarter end mills, three eighths radius. How does that look? So, put that in there. So effectively, here to here to here. Um, I think that's okay. And then if we start that counter bore right there, puts us right about there in line. And so, what that would do, if we go a little bit deeper than we want to by accident, let's say on the tap, right about here, I think it'll be all right. So what we'll say then, we'll say from that center line of our stop, we'll go down to, we'll say two inches and one eighth. So that'll be our first bolt. And then we could say, what do you think? One inch centers? I think a one inch center would be, right now. be too bad. We could cheat that a little bit. We get a little less. We'll see seven eighths. And why do we want to go a little bit less? I'll tell about that. I mean, really, you know, we go down as much as we need to, but on our apron here, eventually, as I mentioned before, that mechanism that actually turns this will be a chain drive of sorts, like that, to another shaft. And then we're gonna say a 45 degree miter gear. Uh, the rest, that other set on that 45 miter gear. So that's gonna have some kind of assembly like so. What I'm gonna do is cut this out of sorts as much as I need to and then this whole assembly will be on another plate subplate that'll pretty much attach in some type of manner like that now that plate and this plate are on two different you know planes in um, this direction so if we're looking at you know where this is the uh, Forget now, this is our new, uh, this is our bracket, you know, attached to the apron where that subplate for that assembly would be, you know, over here in this area. So they're not going to interfere with each other, but, you know, if we can make it a certain way, we'll make it a certain way, you know. Half inch on the counter bore, and then a little bit of material underneath that. We could say, you know, we're just looking total overall now, so where we're at right there without the clearance. So if we do a half, if we do five inches, you know, something like that. Five inches, that's a little bit much. We don't need that much. We do three and five eighths plus that eighth, three and three quarters plus an inch, 
four and three quarters, right? I'll darken that line up a little bit. All right. Get rid of this. Now we have a pretty decent picture as far as what this part's going to look like, at least from this direction. Maybe something like this. Not the best at freestyle in here. Um, nah, something like that, nah. Maybe then what we do, well, what we're gonna have to do anyway. Let's get rid of this for now, that, uh, get rid of that monstrosity of, of a drone. <laughs> we're gonna have to do anyway is we're gonna start with that, so before we do any of these radiuses, we're gonna end up with that squared out part. So I think we just do that for now. And uh, what a lot of what I'm doing on this machine, a lot of the parts that I'm making, new parts, really, I could pretty much say that I haven't finished a single part on the machine yet. Um, pretty much, I'm just trying to get in the ballpark with everything, you know, from. You know, this apron and this stop mechanism, you know, the new cross slide, I still gotta make a gib, I still gotta, you know, fit some things. Um, the lead screw assembly is pretty much set in stone, uh, but like the turret, you know, the, the top tool turret, my cutoff tool, you know, there's still a lot of stuff that needs to get buttoned up. You know, I still got a lot of keyways I gotta make on certain parts. Um, the handbrake, there's a lot of things that have to be done, so. In like something like this where I'll just probably leave it square for now you know get it mounted to here get it operational and then I can worry about you know going and putting these radiuses in and figuring out what I'm gonna do here down the road really we're just looking for um, mechanical you know everything working mechanically and physically and geometrically with everything you know and that everything is the idea is right of you know as far as how things are gonna look I think we're pretty good with that. I like that. I think it'll be strong enough, um, especially because it's going to be pretty thick. Enough material here for that. Um, yeah, so now let's uh, just shoot it over to the next. Now that we got this drawing done, it'll be a little bit easier to do that. So, I'm just going to shoot these lines over. This is that um that register surface that we uh, talked about well this is basically now this line right here will represent where the apron bolts to the actual carriage so anything this side of the line is the apron anything on this side is the actual machine so let's actually do that let's put that in there So let's put our uh, let's put our cross slide. So that's the cross slide. Mm. And now we can put the top of the apron. So that's the apron, that's one inch. And we'll just drop that down. And 
And then we'll put the uh, the white and the cross line right about here. Okay. Now let's go ahead. We'll put our bolts in there. Center it up. Go ahead, put these uh, counterboards for the bolts in it. Let's just double check what we had. 5 sixteenths, 15 30 seconds. So, 15 30 seconds. 30 seconds I believe I have a counter bore in the shop so we'll actually do it usually if I don't have it I just plunge an end mill you know I would have just plunged a uh, half inch end mill in there but we got the counter bore so we'll use it okay and then we'll just put the clearance hole for the bolt as well just so we see what we're doing we're drafting here, so we might as well uh, put everything in there, make it look nice. Okay. Now, what do we got now? So we have the center of our things. What did we say? We said now, so here's our datum surface, our register surface. Uh, we're going to go about 300 on the thickness of the stop. If we wanted that to come flush up, we'd be out there. Um, we can recess a little bit. What I want to do is I want to recess it a little bit. Why do I want to do that? Uh, basically, um, so say this is the stop. As we're moving this way, in this direction, the closer we move this way, the more we got a shot of interfering with the turret. So. You got your stops here. Behind those stops, you'll have the turret moving. So, if we can move this further away, the better. So that's why, recess that 300. 300, are we saving a lot? Not really, but your 5 16 nuts, which are about 5 16 wide, you know, at least we can sink those back a little bit. So, instead of having, you know, 600 sticking out before you know our absolute minimum of a stop you know with a nut on it you know we could bring that out so yeah so if we sink that back 300 and say in some instance we really need the room you take a nut off you can get that stop right up flush against that um i think that'd be that'll be plenty enough so let's say we go 300 on that All right, quarter inch, five sixteenths, a little bit less. So, something like that. Okay, let's uh, put that flange. Let's do here. You guys can hear my music going, but uh, it was quite a nice jump from uh, Biggie Smalls to Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm about. So take it or leave it. Okay. So there's our flange. Uh, let's put the uh, actual, you know, working diameter of the shaft, if you would. And now this shaft. Now this determine this. I'm just going to throw that out, you know, a little far there. But this line, I'll tell you why. Alright, I don't know what I'm going to be doing over here yet. 
pretty much that will be determined when um, I do this uh, miter gear setup. Depending on where that miter gear is in this direction is where my chain drive is going to be. Whether that's you know close up against it here, like I'm hoping. Um, maybe not. Maybe I got to be a little further out here. How I get that sprocket in there, you know, how, this sprocket that's got to kind of go around here to pass, you know. The stops have to pass through it. Everything's got to lock. Everything's got to be nice and tight, you know. So for now, leave that open like that. But, you know, I don't really need it anyway because I'm going to just meet that back, that back side right there. So erase that. And this is a line in there. That's what we got, really, um, to do that now. Now, thinking about this cutaway now, um, issue I'm seeing now is uh, we're going to be reducing the thickness, but you know what? I mean, we're not reducing the thickness a lot. We're going from one inch to, you know, minus 0 0.3, 0 0.7, you know. What's that? 11, 16, something like that. I think it'll be all right. You know, if this, if we were real thin and thinning even more, then you'd worry about that. But, you know, this kind of cross section here of that thickness should be okay. So where, you know, where do we do that now? Um, so we have to be lower than that. And like I, um, also gonna wanna have some kind of radius in there. Uh, to do that now, what I like to do, like with something here, you know, I'm gonna be doing it with an end mill. You know, same thing here, end mill. Now, because of how thick this is when you look at it this way if I'm going to do a radius here I'm not going to you know bring an end mill in like that I'm going to do it this way with a ball mill to get a radius here so what do I got now I think I got a half inch ball three eighths so if I got a half inch that gives us what that gives us a quarter inch right quarter inch radius well I'm going to use a half inch circle so that's right here. So let's see. If we go there. So that might be it. So here's going to be the boundary. We'll use that same, you know, that same line three-dimensional line that'll get us a little extra room a little clearance room I'll probably uh, well I'll talk about that when we talk about how we're gonna make this See, so we got that right there um, we're not gonna do anything with that we're gonna keep that nice and straight let's darken that up now we got it you know that's part of something darken everything up a little bit actually right. that'll be there and then a quarter inch There. All right, I think that'll be pretty good. Um, yes, I think we're in good shape. 
let's actually now, uh, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Let's change this. We're going to change that out here. I want to use, so really, this surface here, 3 eighths from that. And that so I'm gonna go right there put that in there right that's where we come out right so I want to come out and I want to go up at the same time I think it'll look a little bit nicer if we do it that way and then uh, I do not want to use a half inch radius there oh yeah well you're right I could use that. I do have a three-quarter ball. And I want to come down to there. To there. That. So I'm coming up here and coming out at the same time. Yeah, I like to keep these, uh, when I have radiuses and two opposing you know directions coming this way and this way I like to keep them in the same line rather than skew them off if I could um, like I was talking before about the forces and the moments and the stresses all in my mind it just kinda seems in my mind that that works a little bit better of course you know it's a machine part so really when you're radius and things you know to mitigate stress concentrators um, it's really more of a thing when you're talking about like a, a temperature stress relief where you're heating the thing up and redistributing all those forces, you know, to go along these radiuses and whatnot. But it does help, you know, and it looks better to, you know, even if it's just a machine part. And, you know, this isn't, um, I don't know, we're not building a, a 200 ton press here. You know, it's a little 10 inch lathe that's going to be cut in under two inch material, usually aluminum, you know, and, uh, I'm going to be the one using it. So as long as I don't smash my cross slide into this stop, I don't really have to worry about, you know, the structural integrity too much. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's what we're going to make. My three inch cold rolled, that'll work. Uh, thickness wise, I'm going to just keep this at one inch. Uh, actually what I'm going to do first is I think I could probably, um, do that, do this, do that, what can we do? Uh, I'm going to do what I said originally. I'm going to bring this down to about 0.9. Um, take 50 out of that, take 50 off of that side. So this is going to be now 250. This, instead of 700, is going to be 650. Um, we'll do that this way. I can uh, not worry about what I do with the thickness of this part. i got plenty of room. I don't foresee myself having to take much thickness off of this anyway. It's really just a cleanup grind. What's that? A couple thousands. So yeah, that's it. Cut off that block. I'll mill off about 40, 40 thousandths. Grind it. Grind one of these sides. Mill the other side to clearance. Um, what do we got? Ends at 2.9. So, you know, take about 70 off and then just grind it. Um, that'll give me four sides, mill the last two, and then, uh, we're going to do this in the four jaw chuck to bore that out. And then I can just go and cut that out, cut that out, put those holes in there. What I'll do is I'll give myself a pilot hole, one eighth hole that way, ready to go for whenever I decide what I'm going to do. Um leave these square mostly you know as i said about finishing things and also it'd be nice to have that square when i gotta flip that put it in the vise to do that hole again um yeah so that's what we're gonna do so uh i don't know that's it <laughs> All right, yeah, so I lied, that's not it. <laughs> Let me uh, put some dimensions in here while we're here. Right? Now, dimension in, I don't really, uh, I, ain't, I don't go too crazy about it. 
be nice to keep this drawing nice. What I would do really is I'd make a copy of this, I'd dimension on the copy, use that in the shop. But, you know, who cares? <laughs> Let's just make the part, right? What have we got here overall? Four and three quarters. So, get rid of this guy. And let's see, let's get the regular mechanical here. Easier to erase if we want to make this look pretty again. But let's have four and three quarter. This out. Let's check. Four and three quarter. Are we doing inch and seven eighths or do we do inch and ninety? I forget now. I forget now. So we had a uh, inch and an eighth. Inch and a two quarter, inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, two and a half, and three eighths, seven eighths. Two, seven eight. Uh, this. We got two inches, that's nice. That. Seven, eight. Mountain in the future. And do half inch. And then uh inch and three eighths. Um, radius, uh, let's actually go in there, we'll put those all in there now, something I like to do, this, uh, makes it easier for me, when I'm machining everything here, I just pick up the, uh, pick up whatever edges I need to pick up. Keep the readout centered at zero zero, and then I'll just hit those numbers, depending on where they are. This one, an important, or important dimension here. To our center. I'm gonna need this to lay it out for when I set it up in the four draw. So that, but we already know what that is, right? Check it just to make sure. It's a quarter. Um, so we got this, that. Let's put that out there. I'll put that inside the part. I don't like doing that, but. We don't really care. Five eighths. All right, so that, that, that. Let's get this guy over here. What are you? Three quarter, three quarter, and that center, that that. What else do we need? Um, that's about it as far as that goes. Take this out. This one's a little odd because we're uh, we're it going more than three eighths in both directions. We're cheating the one side a little bit, so.
Before we rip out an ETH out. But that dimension is now two inches to the center. And then, so the flat that we can make, we'll go from this side to that line. Two and three quarters. A little bit. that and then let's just make sure that we did this right we don't forget what we did here so from here to here what we're gonna say is 250 now because let's actually draw this better And here, six fifty. So six fifty and two fifty gives us seven fifty. Gives us eight. No, six fifty and two fifty gives us eight fifty and nine point nine overall. So we're point nine overall. That. So we need 0.9 block, four and three quarters by two and seven eighths. Put the big hole in the middle, and then we'll go from there. All right, now we're finished. Um, I'm gonna go in the shop, and we're gonna get to work. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and stay tuned. See how this works out. We'll get it mounted. Make uh, once we bore our hole, we can make our stop. Get that in there, and. Then uh, after that's done, it'll actually start looking like uh, looking like something up there. So, see you soon.